Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to check out the new Z Turbo Image, uncensored version of Z Image Turbo. For those of you unfamiliar, and this new version helps with the uncensored images. Let's head over to the Hugging Face website where we can find all the necessary files and information about this model. As you can see, there are two versions available, version 1 and version 2. We'll be experimenting with both to see what they offer. I initially started with version 1 for my first few test images. Later, I noticed version 2 had been released, prompting me to update my workflow and try it out, which I'll be showing you ahead as well. Thankfully, the creator of the NSFW model has provided a pre-built workflow, which greatly simplifies the setup process. I've taken that workflow and enhanced it slightly to suit my specific needs and experimentation. And importantly, I've also incorporated a LoRa stacker. LoRa, or Low Rank Adaptation, allows you to fine tune the model's output with specific characters or styles. If you want to add any LoRa or anything related to that, you can easily incorporate it into the stacker. In my case, I've created a custom character Laura specifically for Z image, featuring a character I call Zaya. Her name is prominently displayed within the Laura stacker settings. I actually trained this Laura using the standard Z image turbo model, and I'll be uploading a video on that process soon, so stay tuned for that. The goal here is to see if this custom Laura works effectively within the NSFW uncensored version and whether we can successfully generate images of Zaya. The first image I generated using version 1, and to be honest, there's nothing explicitly uncensored about it. So I just wanted to show you guys that the LoRa is generally working, but the output isn't 100% identical to what I get with the normal Z image model. There are subtle differences, which is to be expected. As you can see, Generating these images takes some time. I found it can range from around 200 to 500 seconds, depending on the complexity of the prompt and the settings used. I've tested out this model a lot. And as you can see, this is the version two. I've updated it because I saw it right over here on the Hugging Face page. The workflow has also been updated by the maker to reflect the changes in version two. It includes the recommended text prompt, which I've also used as a starting point. Down below, I've given the same prompt, written the same thing to test out with my Laura that I've created with Z image. As I mentioned before, her trigger word is Zaya. So that's why I'm showing it to you, because the model needs to know which character to focus on. We're using a resolution of 1024 by 1024 pixels for these images, which provides a good level of detail. I also use the Euler A sampler for the first few tests that I have done, and this is the image. And obviously I cannot show you guys the image directly because of YouTube regulations and everything related to explicit content. To further enhance the image quality, I've attached a Seed VR2 node as well. You can use this, but this Seed VR2 requires a lot of VRAM. I'm fortunate enough to be using an RTX 4060, and it seems to be working fine. However, if you find that Seed VR2 is causing issues or consuming too much memory, you can always revert to using a normal upscaler with a suitable model. I'll provide the necessary resources and links right over here in the description. If you don't want to use the Seed VR2, you can simply delete it from the workflow. To do that, you just have to connect the image output directly to the VAE decoder, and the upscaling process will happen using the default settings. So as you can see, Seed VR. So the first time I tried running the workflow with Seed VR2, it gave me an error, obviously. But after a quick adjustment, everything was perfectly fine. So the image generation took around 200 seconds. I'm currently utilizing the Seed VR 3B version of the model. I chose this because, based on previous experience, the 7B version would likely give me an out-of-memory error given my current hardware limitations. 
Obviously, due to platform restrictions and ethical considerations, I cannot directly show you the full unedited output here, but I highly encourage you to try it for yourself. So now, I'll be testing the res multi-step sampler alongside the beta scheduler to see how these different influence the final image quality. Let's see which combination gives us the better results. Based on my past usage, I suspect that either the RES or Euler samplers will provide consistently good results, especially in terms of image stability and detail. If you're looking for a reliable starting point, you can generally use either of those with confidence. So to maintain organization within my workflow, I've just created a group and labeled it Seed VR Upscaler to keep the nodes related to the upscaling process neatly contained. I'm not particularly skilled with sophisticated workflow management techniques, but this simple grouping helps me stay organized. Okay, let me just connect the VAE decoder to the images, which is crucial for enhancing the image quality and reducing artifacts. After that, I'll, I've temporarily turned off some of the nodes in the workflow for testing purposes. If you want, Dfans is the decentralized creator's platform with AI-powered insights. Dfans is 100% AI-friendly and will never ban your account for using AI. This is a big deal. On most platforms, one man can freeze your assets, block your income, and disconnect you from customers. That will never happen on Dfans. If you have been banned anywhere else, Dfans literally welcomes creator who can work on other platforms. They never ban accounts, ever. But the real game changer is the new AI chatbot. With Dfans, .AI chatbot is like having a real chatter working for you 24 seven. You're focused on creating content and bringing traffic from other platforms. And the moment someone lands on your Dfans, AI takes over chatting and everything. So here's a real recording from Dfans of how one creator earned $3,000 overnight just because AI ended up chatting with a whale. And that actually happened. If you're a creator who wants safety, automation, and AI tool that actually helps you earn, Dfans is worth checking out. So I'll give the link in the description to check out Dfans. Thank you. So as you can see, I've included Lenovo at the beginning of the prompt. This is because I'm incorporating another LoRa low rank adaptation model which in this case is specifically tailored for Z-Image. This is the Z-Image LoRa, a fine-tuned version that in some cases is used for generating NSFW content. I think it will still work to some degree, even without explicit NSFW instructions, but it's not gonna be optimal because it's a fine-tuned version and ideally, we would need to fine-tune the LoRa specifically for the particular base model I'm using. However, it will generally still work if you want to experiment with it. I'll give, let me show you the Civitai page for this LoRa. I'm currently using this specific LoRa, and as you can see on a Civitai page, it recommends using 16 steps. So I'm also testing out the image generation using 16 steps in the sampling process. I'll provide a direct link to this LoRa Civitai page in the description down below, so you can easily access it and download it if you're interested in trying it out. So I've updated the number of steps, the sampler, and all the relevant settings according to the LoRa's recommendations. I'll just show you guys how the generated image looks without specifically prompting for NSFW content. It looks pretty good, I think. Obviously, the preview image isn't full HD because I'm currently using a resolution of 863 by 480, which is considerably lower than 1080p. You can easily change the length and width parameters to increase the output resolution as needed. So now, I'm experimenting with generating the same image but explicitly adding a prompt like she is wearing or she is naked in the image to see if the LoRa influences the output accordingly. So as you can see, 
I've updated the resolution to 1024 by 1024 to generate a square image. So if you wanna use the LoRa, which is optimized for Z image turbo, it will work, but it's important to understand that it's not gonna be 100% accurate across all scenarios. So let's try a few more settings to further refine the image generation. So now I'll just close the LoRa stacker and run the image generation process without using the LoRa at all. So as you can see, it's the same basic prompt, but the image quality is arguably better without the LoRa stacker in this particular case. So it's taking around 200 to 300 seconds for the prompt to fully generate the video. If you guys found this video helpful or informative, then please do like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. It would be much appreciated and helps me create more content like tea.